Uh, hello, good morning to all. So, welcome to our ano, uh, video uh, lectures and presentation. So, it's all about uh, irrigation and drainage engineering. Okay, we will discuss the some irrigation principles and processes which includes introduction, history, and methods of irrigation. Okay, uh, so we all know that irrigation is very important in a country or in a uh, economy no napaka vital niya since ang ating, ang ating country is an agricultural uh, nations so ano bang connection ng irrigation sa engineering sa pills natin namang civil engineering so we all know naman na water is very uh, vital no we know that water is light kung walang tubig we all gonna die pati ang mga halaman mga pagkain natin kasalalay sa tubig so tayo bilang isang civil engineer we construct structures to distribute water sa mga communities para sa agricultural lands and household um, uses so i hope that most of you are familiar with uh, irrigations and before we proceed i would like to congratulate group 1 uh, for their uh, video presentation so, ang pinakaunang tanong na siyempre pumapasok sa isipan natin is what is irrigation? Ano nga bang irrigation? Yung mga katanungan na yan ay sasagutin ng ating mga virtual uh, presenter. So, simulan na natin ang magandang James Lamoste, paso. Let's first talk about what is irrigation. Um, irrigation is an artific artificial application of water to the soil used to assist the growing of crops in dry areas and during periods of inadequate rainfall. So, I read the definition what I put in our presentation and then later on, I will just put a video clips. Um, irrigation, it it offers moisture required for growth and development, germination, and other related functions. Um, various sources of water for irrigation, um, like wells, ponds, lakes, canals, tube wells, and dumps. And water is normally supplied to the plants by nature through rains, but total rainfall of a Particular area may be either insufficient or ill time. And then a <clears throat> systematic irrigation system collecting water during the period of excess rainfall and releasing to the crops when it is needed. So, in simple words, by bringing water to dry areas, the uh, dry areas, yeah, by using like wells, ponds, like what I said earlier, wells, ponds, lakes, canals, two wells, and dams. So let me show you a video clips um, discussing what is irrigation. Hi, I'm Emerald Robinson, and in this What Is video, we'll take a look at the agricultural technique known as irrigation. Irrigation is any means used by humans to bring water to the land. It can be as simple as using a garden hose to water a flower bed, or as complex as a system of pipes and canals designed to bring moisture to a desert. Irrigation is used wherever rainfall is either inconsistent or does not provide enough natural water to grow crops. It's estimated that about half of the world's land is irrigated. So, nakuha ba what is irrigation? Right? All right. Okay. So, what is the purpose of irrigation? So, ano yung mga purpose of irrigation? Okay. Pagpatuloy mo ulit, King James Lamoste. Irrigation plays a key role in stabilizing food production in a number of countries by either supplementing or replacing the need for 
natural precipitation for the purpose of food production o oh. so the the main purpose is to stabilize the food production so isa dire sa Pilipinas sa to ah labi na sa kanang bugas na ginakaw na to kanang mga tawag ila gumayan kana kailangan kay na sila patubig and next ah ano it helps grow agricultural crops maintain landscape and revegetate disturbed soil in dry areas and during period of less than average rainfall. Irrigation does not only protect against drought but bring with it numerous other benefits as well as occasional problem. So, kaya nang purpose po sa ano no, irrigation kaya sa mga patubig, labi na sa mga tanom, hindi lang kaya sa food production. So, King James, what is the importance of uh, irrigation? Can you discuss in details? The Insufficient and uncertain rainfall adversely affect agriculture. Drought and famines are caused due to low productivity. Irrigation helps to increase productivity even in low rainfall. Yeah, kay para ibalhin ang mga tubig tong sa dry areas tong gili kayo ginaulan then the productivity on irrigation land is higher as compared to the unirrigated land hmm. next um, um, irrigation has helped to bring most of the fallow land under cultivation irrigation has stabilized the output and yield levels and then lastly irrigation increases the availability availability of water supply which is turn increase the income of the farmers yeah this is the the main purpose main uh, the importance to increase the availability availability of water supply na kinahanglan sa ato ang mga farmers to maintain their um, plantation and that's all for my report about what is irrigation and the purpose of irrigation and the importance of irrigation and thank you for listening good day again okay so thank you very much uh king james lamoste for the nice presentation so no naman kaya masasabi ngayon ni mr alejandro alejandro kay me so let's check kung ano ba ang advantages and disadvantages of irrigation good day everyone i have to discuss the advantages and the disadvantages of irrigation so first i have to discuss the advantages of irrigation so first is the increase of food production how can irrigation improve the food production so food production it is a large-scale irrigation projects are often unsustainable but a variety of small-scale affordable techniques can increase food production example of such techniques include water harvesting collecting runoff and using it to irrigate crops Pastures and trees can significantly improve both yields and the reliability of agricultural productions. Next is protection from famine. What is famine? A famine is a widespread scarcity of food caused by several factors including war, inflation, crop failure, population imbalance, or government policies. In irrigation, protection from famine is it, it talks about the crop failure. So, famine in irrigation is, is the availability of irrigation facilities in any regions ensures the protection against failure of crops, famine due to the drought. In any regions without irrigations, farmers have to depend only in, on rains for growing, crops and since the rains may not provide enough rainfall required for crop growing every year the farmer are always faced with a risk so next is cultivation of cash crops like sugar canes 
tobacco and cotton. So, the, in this advantage, it assures the supply of water for irrigation. Farmers may not farmers may think of cultivating supervisors variety of crops or even other crops which yield high return. Production of these crops in rain feed areas is not possible because even with the slight unavailability of timely water, the crush the these crops would die. And all of the money invested will be wasted. So next is the addition to the wealth of the country. Due to the it is a due to the increase of agricultural revenue of the state and due to the rise in living standard of people, school, hospital, hospitals and other facilities are provided. The condition of um uh, being successful is the one of the advantage or increase the prosperity of people. Irrigation helps people to become successful. So next is the generation of hydroelectric power. Usually in canal system of irrigation, there are drops of difference in elevation of canal bed levels at certain places. Although the drop may not be very high, this difference in elevation can be used successfully to generate electricity. Such small hydroelectric generations projects using bulb turbines have been established in many canals. So irrigation helps to produce an electricity. So next is domestic and industrial water supply. Some water from irrigation canals may be utilized for domestic and industrial water supply for nearby areas compared to the irrigation water need. The water requirement for domestic and industrial uses is rather, rather small and does not affect the total flow much. So next is the inland navigation. It is a large canal can also be used for inland navigation and the transportation of agricultural products to the bandis. So next is improvement of communication. Improvement of the communication almost of the irrigation channels are provided with the inspections roads. These roads can be metal and be used as means of communication. So next is canal plantation. The strip area along the canal is always dumb, dump, and therefore trees and etc. are planted along the canal's banks, water courses, and field boundaries. The increased timber wealth of the country and also the checks of the soil erosion. So next is the improvement in groundwater storage. Due to the Constant percolation and seepage of water, the groundwater table is raised in the area where irrigation facilities are prevalent. prevalent. So long the water table remains well below the root zone of the crop. This improvement in the groundwater storage is beneficial. So the last is the general development of the country. The most is the most important benefit derived from the irrigation is the general development of an agriculture country such as our in which majority majority of people live in villages and have agricultural as their professions. Due to the increased yield and the value of the crop means of communication as such as roadways, railways, the post and telegraph facilities and are introduced. All these turns have different influence in making the people better citizens. There are instances in which the most dry and back backward areas are become prosperous and civilized, mainly due to the introduction of irrigation facilities. So let's have to discuss. So I have to discuss the disadvantages of irrigation. So first is water lagging. 
water lagging if is the water table uh, near to the ground surface over irrigated may rise the water table the saturates the crop zones completely causes causes efflorence and the whole areas become waterlogged so next is the salinity and alkalinity of the land it is the one of the disadvantage of irrigation it affects production in crops pastures in trees by interfering with nitrogen uptake reducing growth and stopping plant reproduction so i can share a short video clip that more explain about the water lagging in salination about the disadvantages of irrigation so thank you mr alejandro for your uh short uh presentation so i'm sure naiintindihan niyo naman lahat ng mga advantages and disadvantages so mostly mas marami pa rin yung advantages kumpara sa disadvantages ng irrigation so since mas marami ang advantages ibig sabihin nun mas maraming trabaho para sa mga engineer Okay, Ms. Sharaan Martinez, can you share your knowledge about the history of irrigation? Kung paano ba nagsimula yung irrigation? Pakinggan natin. Back in the days, people have nomadic lifestyle. They hunt and gather for food. Eventually, they started settling down on one place, and farming became a way of life. In fact, the roots of civilization sprouted because of farming, and water is the most essential element at that part. The early farmers depended solely on rainfall or flood waters, but then realized how inconvenient that was because number one, rain is infrequent. Number two, when the soil is too dry or otherwise too saturated, their crops would die and it would greatly affect their way of living. Thus, the birth of irrigation. Successful efforts to control the flow of water were made in Mesopotamia and Egypt. In ancient Egypt, the construction of canals was a major endeavor of the pharaohs and their servants. Menes, the first king of a unified Egypt, built banks along the Nile River to control flooding, originating the basin system of irrigation. The land was checkerboarded with small basins defined by a system of dikes. Water was drawn from the canals or Nile River directly by a shaduf, which we'll be tackling later on. Irrigation is extremely vital in Mesopotamia, as its name implies in Greek, as the land between two rivers, because it's situated between two rivers, namely Tigris and Euphrates. Flooding problems are more serious in Mesopotamia than in Egypt. And so, ancient Babylonians practiced river regulation and water storage with the use of irrigation. They also controlled the water level of Euphrates by means of building canals. One of the canals of this irrigation structure was 40 feet wide, 16 feet deep, and 350 feet long, which was undertaken by Nimrod. Babylonians also practiced various agriculture to maximize the use of water for irrigation. An example for this is the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, which was considered one of the seven wonders of ancient world. This ancient building was built by King Nebuchadnezzar II for his median wife, Queen Amethyst, because she missed the green hills and valleys of her homeland. This is maybe the grandest gesture of love in ancient history. If that isn't love, what is? Sana or Irrigation devices. Among the primitive irrigation devices used by people in ancient times were the Shaduf, Seiki, and Archimedean screw. Shaduf, also known as Dankli or Pekota in India. It is an Egyptian. Seiki, also invented by the Egyptians. 
consists of a vertical wheel on a horizontal axis coupled to a horizontal wheel with simple gears. With pots attached to its outer wing, the vertical wheel is partly submerged in the water. A cow or horse is hitched to the horizontal wheel, which turns as the animal walks in circles. The gears cause the vertical wheel to turn, and when a water-filled pot reaches the top before it starts downward, it is emptied into a trough leading to a filled ditch. Archimedean screw consists of a hollow wooden cylinder with a helix inside. The apparatus is mounted slantwise to post so that the end of the cylinder is submerged in water. When the cylinder is rotated vigorously by means of a crank, the water rushes up the helix and flows out of the top of the cylinder. The device was named after its inventor, Archimedes, who discovered the law of fluid mechanics or displacement. And now, let's focus on the history of irrigation in the Philippines. The Rice Terraces Early inhabitants of the Philippine archipelago engaged in irrigated agriculture. Anthropologist H. Otley Bayer postulates that the rice-eating proto malays constructed the first rice terraces in northern Luzon. This would place the age of the earliest rice terraces at approximately 2,000 years old, with which most experts agree. In his Art and Culture in the Mountain Provinces, William Bayer writes that the operation and maintenance of the rice terraces are enforced by a council of elders called Tinaba. Land preparation and planting are prepared by the women. Feminists and women activists would definitely rage with this thought, but let's hear this out. In the belief that since women are childbearing, what they plant will likewise be fruit bearing. Are you convinced enough? The King of Spain granted lands to religious orders to support their missionary efforts. These religious orders grew rice as a major crop to supplement the allowance granted to them by royalty to carry out their mission. In response to the representations of these orders, the colonial government constructed irrigation systems on their lands to make them more productive and therefore generate more income. These lands became familiar and known as Friar Lands or Friar States. An example of an irrigation system in the Friar Lands is the Prenza system in Marilao, Bulacan, built in 1875. The original purpose of the project was to irrigate an orchard to be established in Lolomboy Estate and its suburbs by the Dominicans. But the soil in that area was not suitable for fruit trees and other orchard plants, so rice was planted instead. The system is still operational as part of the integrated Angat Maasim River Irrigation System, which will be discussed later on. Irrigation systems at that time are built on the Friar land in the five provinces around Manila namely Bataan, Bulacan, Rizal, Cavite, and Laguna. The irrigation system in the provinces mentioned were constructed at a total cost of 6.13 million pesos during the regime. Among these friar lands, Cavite attained the highest level of irrigation development. The Zanjeras or Sanjera is the local name for a cooperative irrigation society and is a unique development of farmers in Ilocos region. These communal irrigation systems are simple affairs and constructed without any assistance in the central government. These societies came into existence starting 1630 and are still operating. Its function is simply to procure a stable, reliable supply of water for the use of its members. Water for these indigenous systems is obtained usually from a river by means of locally constructed bamboo and rock diversion structures placed across the river. Lady Aquas, implemented in the last quarter of the 19th century in the operation and maintenance of irrigation systems in the Philippines. 
the Americans recognized the need for irrigation development to stimulate the economic growth of the country. An expert American civil engineer, C.G. Rentmore, was recruited by the Philippine government to head the irrigation division on contractual basis. But it was during the time of his successor, W.L. Corton, that the irrigation division undertook the San Miguel River irrigation system in San Miguel Tarlac with a service area of 6,000 hectares. This system cost 789,000 pesos to build and was inaugurated on August 1, 1913. Okay, thank you so much, Miss uh, Sharaan Martinez, for that very informative uh, presentation. Ang lakas naman ng presentation ni Sharaan. So, panoorin naman natin si Mr. R.G. Uh, Alterado for the continuation of history of irrigation. Hello guys, this is RGB Alterado. I'm going to report my part about history of irrigation. First, the Philippine Commonwealth was established in 1935 pursuant to the Tidings McJaffey Act providing for full independence of the country where Manuel Quezon became the first president of the Commonwealth. Commonwealth Act No. 87 authorized the President of the Commonwealth to administer irrigation systems constructed under Act No. 2152 as amended and to make adjustments proceedings on unpaid irrigation charges. Commonwealth Act No. 176 passed on November 13, 1936, an act created as an irrigation insurance fund for the purpose of meeting the cost of the repair construction and improvement of irrigation systems constructed by the national government. In 1938, pork barrel funds were allotted for irrigation projects. Pork barrel allotments were subject to the whims of favored politicians and were usually spread out thin over many public works projects. This resulted in the construction of dams and streams with insufficient water supply or on sites where foundation were unstable causing the collapse of dams during heavy floods. Projects were left unfinished, completed, and operating systems abandoned. Under the Japanese regime, during the Japanese regime, the irrigation section of the Division of Hydraulics was converted into the Irrigation and Drainage Division. Um, during this period, two national systems were constructed the Anagdong RIS in Saraiya, Tayabas, now Quezon Province, is a service area of 270 hectares, and Rizal RIS in Nueva Ecija has a service area of 100 hectares. Due to wartime conditions and inadequate funds allocated for operation and maintenance, most national systems rapidly deteriorated. The farmers required to turn over one half of their pallet produced to feed the 250,000 men occupation army by the Japanese authorities. By the end of World War II, there was 14 national systems with an aggregate service area of 87,400 hectares. The area served by different types of government built a private irrigation system throughout the country at the time was around 201,481 hectares. This aggregate area pre represented an irrigation development level of 6.44% vast and potential irrigable area of 3.16 million hectares nationwide. All national systems in the country were in a bad state of deterioration and disrepair, except the newly constructed Hanagdong RIS and Rizal IRS. The Philippine economy was based on agriculture upon which 70% of the population depended directly or indirectly for its livelihood. So it was imperative and log logical that the sector had to be given, given priority under the National Rehabilitation Program. The initial step in agricultural growth was to increase palai production so that the country could be self-sufficient in its staple food. All post-war administration therefore enunciated the policy of increasing palai production so that self-sufficiency sufficiency in rice could be attained as early as possible. Manuel Rojas, agricultural development was a scenic one that thus he proposed a program to increase 
rice production which called for the cultivation of 100,000 hectares of new areas every year for five years. In 1947, the Irrigation Division of BPW was reactivated. The division updated the pre-war plans and design for three national irrigation projects, the Maasim RIS in Bulacan, Baikal Baikal RIS in Nueva Ecija, and Mirai Aka RIS in Bataan. And then in 1949, the total number of national systems had increased to 17 with an aggregate service area of 91,000 hectares. Then Rojas Rice Program leaned heavily on the expansion of the cultivated area through large-scale mechanized farming, but the strategy failed because a critical element was missing. And then the time of El Pedro Quirino. During his term, 11 national systems with a combined eligible area of 28,780 hectares were completed. Increasing the number of the system to 28 under aggregated irrigated area to 119,680 hectares, bringing total irrigated lands nationwide to approximately 266,000 hectares. The country came that the lysing flows to become self-sufficient in, in rice in 1953. He was credited with sponsoring the growth of industrial ventures and expanding irrigations. And then the last, Ramon Magsaysay. Like his predecessors, Magsaysay formulated a program to attain self-sufficiency in rice as one of the major objectives of his administration. During his term, 16 new national system with an aggregate eligible area of 76,770 hectares were completed. In addition, 27 new communal system with a combined service area of 57,410 hectares went into operation during his term in office. At the close of 1957, the total number of national systems had risen to 44 with an aggregate eligible area of 196,650 hectares. Also accelerated the construction of other community-based irrigation systems by creating the Office of the Presidential Arm and Community Development or PACD. And then the total irrigated area throughout the country increased to approximately 400,000 hectares, pushing up the rate of irrigation development to 12.8%. So that's all and thank you. Now let's go to the creation of Irrigation Agency. On January 11, 1962, Eugenio Baltao, congressman of the 1st District of Nueva Ecija, filed a bill seeking the creation of an irrigation agency. The measure designated as House Bill No. 21 was co-sponsored by 27 other congressmen and passed the bill on May 11, 1962. President Macapagal made it into law, signed on June 22, 1963, known as Republic Act No. 3601, entitled An Act Creating the National Irrigation Administration. This was implemented on August 13, 1964, under Executive Order No. 91. George Abad became the chairman of the Board of Directors. He was the secretary of the Department of Public Works and Communication that time. Thomas de Guzman was the first NIA administrator. He completed Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering at University of the Philippines. Conrado Mercado also completed the same degree at University of Santo Tomas and became assistant administrator of the agency. Ferdinand Marcos won in the 1965 election and became the 6th President of the Republic. Under his administration, NIA held groundbreaking ceremonies for the Angat River Multipurpose Project at the dam site of the Angat River Irrigation System in Bustos, Bulacan on August 8, 1966. Recognizing that irrigation development was the key to increase palay productivity, the President gave the program his full support by directing the release of funds to NIA in increasing amounts and on a regular basis starting September 1966. Alfredo El Junio was appointed by the President and became the next administrator of NIA on December 1, 1966. He graduated Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering at the University of the Philippines in 1939 and passed the board exam the same year. With Junio at the helm of the agency, with the full backing of the President and the able support of his staff, irrigation development in the Philippines recovered the momentum 
it had lost after the intensive activities in the 1950s. Irrigation was the crying need of the hour, but to answer that need, the government required outside assistance due to its limited resources. The Philippine government agreed the necessary steps were taken. Rapid irrigation development followed and with it, Nia grew equally rapidly. A state of martial law was declared in the country on September 21, 1972. On March 28, 1974, the National Water Resources Council was created by Presidential Decree No. 424. The Council's objective is to undertake a scientific and orderly development and management of all water resources in the country consistent with the principles of optimum utilization, conservation, and protection of these resources to meet current and future needs. On September 7, 1974, Pantabangan Dam was inaugurated. Pantabangan Dam was the first ever built by NIA for multiple purposes. But what made its construction all the more noteworthy was that it was undertaken by an all-Filipino group, the Hydro Resources Contractors Corporation, which completed the project 17 months ahead of schedule. And because of the huge success, NIA was recognized by the World Bank as the finest irrigation agency in the whole Asia and in any developing country in the world during that time. After the productive service of Alfredo Junio, his successor, Fiorello Istuar, became the next administrator of NIA on March 17, 1980. Istuar was recognized here and abroad as a leading structural engineer with a long string of outstanding achievement in the private sector. He graduated from the University of the Philippines in 1959 with a Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering degree and obtained its Masteral in 1962, Doctorate in 1965, both from Lehigh University in Pennsylvania, USA. The inauguration of the Magat Multipurpose Dam in Isabela on October 27, 1982 highlighted NIA's construction activities during the year. It is considered the biggest of its kind in Southeast Asia. On February 25, 1986, at the height of the bloodless revolution backed by people power, Corazon Aquino was installed as the seventh president of the post-war Philippine Republic. The resignation of the current administrator is to war was accepted by President Aquino and initially appointed Federico Alday Jr. As administrator who assumed office on May 1, 1986. At the age of 39, Alday is the youngest NIA administrator, obtained his Bachelor of Laws degree in 1971. The first significant event that took place after the change in the NIA management was the inauguration of the flood forecasting and warning system for dam operations at the NIA compound on October 14, 1986, with President Aquino as the guest of honor. To underscore the significance of the 25th anniversary of the agency on June 22, 1988, and so that the people will appreciate the vital importance of irrigation in national development, President Aquino issued Proclamation No. 256 on April 28, 1988, declaring the third week of June of every year as irrigation week. On June 27, 1988, groundbreaking ceremonies were held at the dam site of the biggest infrastructure project being implemented under the administration of President Aquino, which was the Balog Balog multi purpose project in Tarlac. A few days later, on July 2, 1988, the Malatgao River irrigation project in Nara Palawan was inaugurated. Later in that year, on November 12, 1988, the Naga Kalabanga Irrigation Project in Kamarinisur was inaugurated. An auspicious event for NIA in 1989 was the inauguration in early January of the first Ala River Irrigation Project. On June 1, 1989, NIA started implementing the irrigation component of the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program, a 10-year socio-economic development plan considered the centerpiece program of the Aquino administration. The following slides are the photos of some major projects of the National Irrigation Administration.
So, thank you so much, Mr. R.G. Alterado and Uberio Pundang for your uh, short presentation. So, very competitive din yung mga groupmates ng group 1. So, bali, doon pala nagsimula ang lahat-lahat ng irrigation. So, ngayon, alam natin how it started. So, panoorin naman natin ngayon kung ano yung mga methods of irrigation na i-discuss ni Mr. Jomer Ebonya and Mr. Lawrence Tandensya. Good day, sir. We were reporting now the methods of irrigation. The first three topics will be discussed by me, Jomer Ebonya, and the next three topics will be discussed by Lawrence Tendencia. To start with, what is irrigation? Irrigation is the artificial process of applying controlled amount of water to land to assist the production of crops. This will be the basic needs of farmers to help them grow the agricultural crops, maintain landscapes, and revegetate disturbed soils in dry areas and during periods of less than average rainfall. The first method of irrigation is surface irrigation. This method of irrigation it doesn't require a machine to take care of it because water is scattered equally to the land with the help of gravitational pull. And now, we will be discussing the three types of surface irrigation. The first one is basin irrigation. Next is poro irrigation. And the third and last one is bay or border strip irrigation. Basin irrigation is a common practice of surface irrigation. If a field is leveled in all directions, it is compassed by a dike to prevent runoff, provide an indirect flow of water into the field. There are three advantages and disadvantages of basin irrigation. The first advantage is it saves time. Once the water is open, it reaches other trees automatically. Number two is its economic investment is less. Three, it's beneficial for more trees. And also the disadvantages of this basin irrigation is not useful for all crops and wasted of water is caused in it disease spread in trees and i will let you see some of the sample or video clip about basin irrigation watch this basin irrigation is one of the surface irrigation method and one of the oldest method of irrigation Basin irrigation, where the field is divided into a number of terrace rectangular bays. Look at the rectangular fields. Water is applied, distributed over the soil surface by gravity. Here fields are small areas having level surfaces that are surrounded by earth banks. Observe the field. It is divided into a number of terrace rectangular bays. In this farmers dig small canals from tank to fields to supply water. And also, provision should be made for the draining the excess amount of water from one field to another field. Look at the outlet of the, this basin. For uniform supply of water and nutrients, Soil should be prepared well. For this plugging and leveling are done.
These system of irrigation are common used in where the wheat and rice are grown. Water distribution is uncontrolled in this method and therefore this is inherently inefficient method. The next type of surface irrigation is poro irrigation. In this technique, trenches or poro are dug between the crop row in the field. Farmers flow water down to the poros. As we can see in the picture in the PowerPoint, it is also an example of poro irrigation. And now we will discuss about the advantages and disadvantages of poro irrigation. The first advantages, advantage of poro irrigation is two to three up acre or ingest irrigation water can be applied at once to recharge depleted moisture in the root zone zone. Number two, initial capital investment and other than land grading is relatively low. The third one is water can be used even if it contains a moderate amount of colloidal materials. Number four, water is not applied directly to the plants, which reduce the scalding to crop foliage. Now we will discuss about the disadvantages. The disadvantages of this poro irrigation is number one is the land needs to be graded ashore uniform distribution of irrigation. So the irrigation must be equally divided to those plants that is needed. Number two, poro irrigation is not efficient in the sandy soil, water soak and it before it reaches end of the field. Number three, difficult to apply small amounts like one acre Worker of inches or of irrigation of water. So it must be a big amount of pot irrigation. Number four, in some soil, lateral spread of water across bed is not adequate to provide full irrigation. Let us see the example of this poro irrigation. So the third type of irrigation system we use at the farm is furrow irrigation that we use a gated pipe to put the water into the furrows. These gated pipes are six inches in diameter and they can be 20 feet long, 30 feet long. And every 30 inches along the gated pipe, there's a gate, uh, an opening that lets the water out and you can open and close and adjust the size of the opening for the amount of water that you want to put into the furrow. Each one of those gates can put out about, uh, depending on how open they are, they can put out as much as 16 gallons a minute out of each gate. So I'm going to open this up. and the gated pipe is going to start to fill up. So now we have water coming out of each of the gates and it's headed down the furrow and I've uh, shoveled dirt on the backside of the of the pipe so the water for sure is only going to flow in one direction which is which is downhill and the uh, the water will flow to the end of the row and then I'll turn the volume down and let it percolate across into the beds. This whole process, depending on the length of the field and what kind of soil you have, could take several hours to get to the end and irrigate the whole field. It is less precise, clearly, because there's more water at the beginning of the field. More water is going to work its way down into the soil at this end of the field. But hopefully you get it um, down to the end pretty quickly, and then you get a more even distribution of water. The next type of surface irrigation is bay or border strip irrigation. In this, in this technique of irrigation, a field is divided into a number of strips. The width of the strips varies from 10, 10 to 15 meters and land varies of 90 meters to 400 meters. Strips are separated by low embankments of leaves. The water is diverted, diverted in the field channels into the strip. And for now, we will be discussing about the advantages and disadvantages of this bay border strip irrigation. The first advantage of this 
It is the best method of to irrigate close growing crops. Uniform and distribution and high water application efficiency are possible in the system of properly de designed. Number three, labor requirements is less to irrigate the field. Number four, operation of this system is simple and easy. Number five, existing water is drained out of the outlets are available. And now, let's proceed to the disadvantages. Number one, more labor is required for leaving of the field. Number two, bridges cut down the neat crop area. Large irrigation stream are required. Number four, repair of bridge and supervision during irrigations are needed. And now for the sample of this bay border strip irrigation, watch this. Let us discuss now the second method of irrigation, the localized irrigation. Not like surface irrigation, this localized irrigation is a machine or a pipe network that scattered water throughout the land or water or use water distribution so that all the plants get water effectively. And now let us discuss about the advantages and disadvantages of this localized irrigation. First is low cost of labor and energy. Number two, high application efficiency as a water is applied. <laughs> Water outlet holes decrease not a uh, decrease root deep due to the constant availability of water. This can decrease the plant stability. And now for the sample uh, sample video clip of this localized irrigation, let's watch this. So I will share some short clip of sprinkler irrigation. The next method is center pivot irrigation. So it also the same of sprinkler irrigation, but the difference is it has a overhead sprinkler. So the machine moves in a circular pattern and it is fed with the water from the pivot point at the center of the circle. There are also advantages and disadvantages of center pivot irrigation. So the advantages is number one, it is least expensive of the methods of irrigation. Number two, 
Center pivot system can be programmed to start and stop at specified angle or time. So through advanced technology right now, this is method can also operate through computers or smartphones. Disadvantages Number 1. One disadvantage of center pivot irrigation system is that a circular field leaves a lot of unused space. Number 2. Deep roots can form on clay soil from center pivot tires. Roots are trails of the tires in the way of compaction that can lead to affect the soil, which can be also affect the plantation of crops. Led to the innovation of center pivot irrigation. The system consists of a pumping station, which captures water from a source such as a river, well, dam, or reservoir. The pump transports the water from the source through the pipes to the central tower, or pivot point. Water is driven through the span structure and distributed to the sprinklers, which apply water drops of the right size to maximize absorption into the soil. The center pivot moves automatically, powered by a highly efficient fractional horsepower electric motor moving on wheels, designed to handle even difficult terrain. Center pivots can be used on nearly any type of agricultural crops. So sub-irrigation is a process which we raise the water table to scatter the water across the land. Or we can also say that this method is watering the plant below instead of above. Sub-irrigation, advantages and disadvantages. So the advantages are, number one, it provides moisture to crop by upward capillary action. Number two, applying water through SDI maintains dry crop foliage. So the SDI is sub-drip irrigation. So number three, it can be used in low water capacity in high infiltration rate. Number four, it reduces incidence of foliar disease. So foliar disease such as scalding that can affect the production of crops. Number five, it reduces loss of applied pesticide. Disadvantages Number 1. Here, soil is replaced with water and nutrients suspended in solution. Number 2. Water appliance may be largely unseen. It is more difficult to evaluate system operation and application uniformity because this irrigation, the way of watering, is below the crop so it cannot be seen. So number 3. It reduces upward water movement. Number 4. It very costly. Number five, it is a less developed technology than some alternative irrigation system. So I will share another clip of sub irrigation. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Jomer and Lawrence, for your video presentation. So, napaka informative nung ano, uh, video presentation na pinakita nila, tiba. So, based sa kanilang uh, report, it showed us the most common uh, 
method of irrigation which is a uh, one surface irrigation localized sprinkler irrigation center pivot and sub irrigation uh, system so based sa mga method nito lahat ng mga method na to ay ilan lang yung applicable sa natin sa ating country pinaka common nga sa atin yung surface irrigation so bihira sa atin uh, hindi pa ako nakakita ng center pivot na irrigation dito sa sa atin sa Pilipinas and sub irrigation so hindi pa rin ako nakakita ng sub irrigation so na present din nila yung mga disadvantages and advantages of each kind of methods so hopefully nakuha niyo yung mga advantages and disadvantages para once na mag-design kayo ng mga uh, irrigation structures you will have to consider those uh, advantages and disadvantages okay so hopefully uh, nakuha niyo to ng ano lesson and so that's all for today just uh, watch the video and submit your assignment through canvas okay so see you again next meeting so bye bye and pahabo lang uh, thank you very much sa group one for a very nice uh, presentation lakas lakas ng presentation niya very good